Member of City Council meeting. Call roll to confirm a quorum. Council Member Abdelgawad. Yes. Council Member Boehner. Present. Council Member Burke. Present. Council Member Holman absent. Council Member Hubach. Present. Council Member Kellogg. Present. Council Member Moorhead. Present. Council Member Stevens. Present. Mayor Kirkhoff. Present. We do have a quorum. Everybody please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have Bill 3061 declaring the April 7th election results since emergency reading. I'll entertain a motion to dispose of this. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to dispose of that bill. And I apologize, I don't have it in front of me to read the, okay. what, the bill number itself. You would like to approve Bill 3061? Yes. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve Bill 3061. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. We have a second reading of Bill 3061. We have it by... Uh, in its entirety. The second reading of Bill 3061 in its entirety, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, declaring the results of the April 7, 2015 election and declaring this bill as an emergency. Whereas a general municipal election was held on April 7, 2015, and whereas Section 9.3 of the Raymore City Charter calls for the Council to declare the election results at the next regularly scheduled Council meeting following the, following the election. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Raymore, Missouri, as follows. Section 1, it is hereby found and determined by a canvas of the voters by the City Council of the City of Raymore, Missouri, at the election held on April 7, 2015, in conformity with the Comprehensive Election Act of 1977, Revised Statutes of Missouri, the provisions of the Charter, and the ordinances of the City of Raymore, Missouri, as follows. Council Member Ward 1, two-year term. Candidate Kevin Kellogg. Total votes received 153. The City Council does find that Kevin Kellogg is the candidate for Council Member from Ward 1 who received the highest number of votes and shall hold the office for a two year term until a successor is duly elected or appointed and qualified according to law. Council Member from Ward 2, two year term. Candidate Joseph W. Burke III. Total votes received 232. Candidate Thomas Serco. Total votes received 150. The City Council does find that Joseph W. Burke III is the candidate for council member from Ward 2 who received the highest number of votes and shall hold the office for a two year term until a successor is duly elected or appointed and qualified according to law. Council member Ward 3, two year term. Candidate Kevin Barber. Total votes received 223. Candidate Jennifer Boxberger. Total votes received 74. The City Council does find that Kevin Barber is the candidate for council member from Ward 3 who received the highest number of votes and shall hold the office for a two-year term until a successor is duly elected or appointed and qualified according to law. Council member Ward 4, two-year term. Candidate Charlene Hubach, total votes received 185. Candidate John Berenson, total votes received 169. The City Council does find that Charlene Hubach is the candidate for council member from Ward 4 who received the highest number of votes and shall hold the office for a two-year term until a successor is duly elected or appointed and qualified according to law. Section 2, it is further found, declared, and determined that notice of said election was duly given and published in the manner provided by law and that said election was held and conducted in all respects in conformity with the Constitution and laws of the state of Missouri governing elections and subject to the provisions for charter cities. Section 3, severability. If any section, subsection, sentence, clause, phrase, or portion of this ordinance is for any reason held invalid or unconstitutional by any court of competent jurisdiction, such portion shall be deemed a separate, separate, distinct, and independent provision, and such holding shall not affect the validity of the remaining portions thereof. Section 4, emergency reading. This bill is declared and authorized as an emergency and will be read in its entirety to promote the administration of government and permit the newly elected officials to begin their terms. 
Section 5, effective date. The effective date of approval of this ordinance shall be coincidental with the mayor's signature and attestation by the city clerk. Duly read this first time this 13th day of April 2015. Be it remembered that the above ordinance was approved and adopted the 13th day of April 2015 by the following vote. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3061, declaring the April 7, 2015 election results. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve Bill 3061. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion passes unanimously. Move on to the oath of office. We'll begin with the oath of offices in um, chronological order of wards. Joe Burr. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. I possess the qualifications prescribed by law. I possess the qualifications prescribed by law. For the office for which I was elected. For the office for which I was elected. And I will support the Constitution of the United States. And I will support the Constitution of the United States. And of the state of Missouri affecting charter cities. And of the state of Missouri affecting charter cities. And all of the ordinances of the city of Raymore. And all of the ordinances of the city of Raymore. And that I will faithfully discharge my official duties. And that I will faithfully discharge my official, my official duties in the office of council member. In the office of council member for which I was elected. For which I was elected. Kevin Barber. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. I possess the qualifications prescribed by law. I possess the qualifications prescribed by law. For the office to which I have been elected. To the office of which I have been elected. And that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And I will support the Constitution of the United States. And of the state of Missouri affecting and charter cities. In the state of Missouri affecting charter cities. And all of the ordinances of the city of Raymore. And all the ordinances of the city of Raymore. And that I will faithfully discharge my official duties. I will faithfully discharge my official duties in the office of council member in the office of council member for which I've been elected for which I've been elected Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I study. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. I possess the qualifications prescribed by law. I possess the qualifications prescribed by law. For the office to which I have been elected. To the office to which I have been elected. And that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And of the state of Missouri and affecting of, charter cities. And of the state of Missouri affecting charter cities. And all the ordinances of the city of Raymore. And all the ordinances of the city of Raymore. And that I will faithfully faithfully discharge my official duties. And that I will faithfully discharge my official duties in the office of council member. In the office of council member for which I have been elected. For which I've been elected.
you get the going away prize here. Jason Boehner, an appreciation and recognition for your dedicated service and the commitment of the City of Raymore, Missouri as a council member for Ward 3, 2013 through 2015. Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, usually there's a traditional five minutes length for comments. Uh, but seeing as how I've used my voice so sparingly over the last two years, I respectfully request that I be allowed to invoke Councilman Kellogg's definition of the traditional five. <clears throat> I'll be short, but perhaps less so than you are used to. Um, first of all, I would like to thank my wife of 23 years. Um, without her, this is all meaningless. And with her, it means everything. I'd also like to thank my dad, who's in attendance tonight, and um, thank him for teaching me the lesson that um, if you don't work, you don't eat. And that when it gets tough and you fall down, you just brush it off and you get back up and you take another step forward. I'd like to thank the council. You welcomed me. You were warm and gracious and civil in all our discussions and I deeply appreciate that. I deeply appreciate the camaraderie that I have felt as I have served with you to serve the citizens of Raymore. In our day and age of the selfie and constant social media updates, it may appear to many that the basic unit of society is without question the individual. I would like to contrast that with the idea that the basic, of unit, the basic unit of society is and always has been the family. From as far back as the beginning of written history, we can see the human desire to join and develop familial relationships. This desire can be seen in, many, in the many ways humans join themselves to one another, whether in nuclear families, work families, friendship families. In fact, the variety of families and family types are astounding. It is also clear that it is in and through these type of relationships and associations that the human race has sought for the sometimes elusive quality of happiness this being said, I would suggest that a community, if anything, is an extended family striving for the happiness so enshrined in our country's Declaration of Independence. My purpose this evening is to focus on a few simple principles which, if followed, will be the source of much happiness among the many different kinds of families here in Raymore and increase our community strength and prosperity. It has been said that happy and successful families are established and maintained upon the principles of respect, compassion, work, and wholesome recreational activities. These principles pump the lifeblood of a community. I would like to give the following ideas for consideration as I leave the council. First, a focus towards an entrepreneurial business incubator where a partnership between economic development, the Chamber of Commerce, and post-secondary education providers can be used as a tool to home grow new businesses and help people with big ideas turn those goals into reality. This partnership could also fine-tune the training and education of a high-skill workforce prepared to develop, to develop their, either their own ideas or assist the growth of those who may shop Raymore as a desired location. This leverages the yet fully untapped skills and ideas of the, of the community family and prepares Raymore and its younger generation to take its place among the more, vi more vibrant communities of the future as a self-generating engine of wealth and personal satisfaction. 
Secondly, may I also suggest a stronger focus towards developing a community-based FIME and performance art program and facility. The Art Commission, in conjunction with the Parks and Recreation Department and our Economic Development Office, have an opportunity to fully round out the wholesome recreational activities within the community and draw upon the talents that sometimes are overlooked in our artistic community members. Members who bring so much inspiration and vitality and thought to the quality of life we could all be enjo enjoying. It would be a bold step toward an all-inclusive community. In addition to the increase of life quality, this idea has the potential to develop into a strong regional differentiator for the city of Raymore and bring with it the income and investment that follows when a community has engaged all her members. Thirdly and lastly, may I suggest that we more carefully consider our reaction to the development of lower cost housing and the socioeconomically, de di socioeconomically disadvantaged members of our community. When a community shuns the less advantaged or seeks undifferentiating homogeny, it does so at its own peril. Communities and families by their very natures thrive on variety and the different stages of personal growth. To put it simply, we need everyone in all life stages to make community work. Just as a closed gene pool introduces mutations and malignancy, a closed community breeds discontentment and distrust. If we are exclusive in any way with a not in my backyard policy, the laws of reaping what you sow come into effect and we will reap a fractured and less rounded community family. As an architect, I have spent nearly 20 years of my professional life asking the what if question. It is a question that I love. What if Raymore was a community that regardless of your socioeconomic status, your life would improve if you moved here? What if you would live longer just because you lived within the city limits? What if Raymore was a community where you were valued and utilized no matter where you were in life? What if Raymore was a springboard to success? Can you imagine that? Can you see it? Is that vision different, today, different than what is today? Are there policies that can parallel the things and the principles that make your family successful? In conclusion, think family, think big, plan strategically, and be great. Thank you. And the next thing is adjournment. A short reception will be held immediately following this meeting in honor of the outgoing and newly elected officials outside the council chambers. Everybody is invited to attend. Entertain a motion for adjournment. Mr. Mayor, I move to adjourn. Second. Se we have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? We are in adjournment. Thank you. We have a roll call to confirm a quorum. Council Member of Delgawad. Here. Councilmember Barber. Here. Councilmember Burke. Present. Councilmember Holman absent. Councilmember Hubach. Coming in. Absent. She's coming oh. in. Present. Councilmember Kellogg. Present. Councilmember Moorhead. Present. Councilmember Stevens. Present. Mayor Kirkhoff. Present. We do have a quorum. Everybody please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, we took care of presentations and awards earlier. There are no personal appearances, so we'll move on to staff reports. Thank you, sir. I would ask Mr. Crass to make a report this evening. 
Just want to thank you, Mr. Fearborn, Mr. Members of the Council. Just wanted to update everyone. There is quite a bit of disruption out here at the entrance to City Hall. Uh, the contractor has been working over the past week excavating the around the tower and uh, exposing the footings. They started installing the resistance piers uh, today. I would expect that that will continue throughout the throughout the week. And then we, uh, weather permitting, we seem to be in quite a wet cycle, uh, getting things restored and concrete replaced sometime next week. That concludes my report. Question to the staff, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I was talking to Mr. Fearborn, and he said there was some kind of water problem there. Is that something that you've figured out down there underneath that thing? Um, we continue to chase uh, chase a water leak that leaks down into, into downstairs. We we think we have uh, found a uh, found what one of the sources may be, and I've been working with the uh, building make maintenance technician on that, but. Uh, nothing related to this project is going to, to solve the, uh, the issue that we have downstairs. Kevin? Not so much a question, but a comment. Um, congratulate or um, recognize the, the crews that have been doing the work when I walked up tonight. I didn't expect to see it so neat and tidy and, and safe of a surface to walk on, but I, it is recognized that it is as neat and uh, tidy as it can be. Very surprised about that. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. I would ask Mr. Cataret to make a report for community development. Thank you. Uh, a few items this evening. Uh, first, the next meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission that was scheduled on April 21st uh, has been canceled. We have no items of business that evening. Um, in addition, um, on that evening, uh, Commissioner Don Meiske and myself will be at the uh, American Planning Association Conference this year, which is held in Seattle for a number of days. Uh, but we are scheduling a Planning Commission meeting on May 5th, and it will be uh, a meeting for commissioner training. Uh, third, there is a good neighbor meeting uh, scheduled for tomorrow evening here in the council chambers at 6.30 p.m. There's an application uh, requesting to modify uh, development standards that apply to a proposed subdivision of the Good Ranch. It's referred to as Prairie View of the Good Ranch. It was approved by City Council back in 2007, but has never been developed. The current property owners are looking to sell the property and uh, the proposed developer has a different plan uh, in mind than what was initially approved. So it would require modification of some of the development standards that would apply to development on the property. Uh, so the first step in a rezoning process uh, would be the good neighbor meeting. So that again is scheduled for tomorrow at 630 where the developer will be here to present the plan and answer questions. And then lastly, uh, on your agenda tonight is the Monroe Street uh, rezoning application. It's item C under new business. Uh, that does require a public hearing. It was duly advertised for this evening and the public was notified of its public hearing. Uh, but it is not identified as such on the agenda. So I just wanted to make sure that council and, and the mayor does identify that item C under new business is a public hearing. Thank you. Any questions of staff? Thank you. Thank you, Jim. I would ask Mr. Mustine, Parks and Recreation Director, to make a report for Parks and Recreation. Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, just a quick update of what's been going on in Parks and Recreation over the past month. Uh, Superintendent Rulo was notified that uh, City of Raymore is for the second year row is a Tree City USA. So that's a great accomplishment for our staff. We are currently uh, accepting applications and, and conducting interviews for several seasonal and part-time employees through the Parks Department and the rec side through uh, summer camp and concessions and things of that nature. We're uh, moving into our busy season as far as outdoor sports, summer camp, athletics, things of that, things of that nature. So uh, lot, lots of stuff going on. The restrooms are, are open for the season and at all the shelters and the concession stands. And uh, this weekend we have the Jog With Your Dog event uh, located at the Public Works. This is an event that uh, benefits the animal control shelter and that, uh, that is this Saturday. So those are, those are some main highlights. My staff's provided a written report for you as well. What time does the jog with your dog 
Dog with your dog is from, I believe, at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is stationed there at the public works facility right by the animal control. And as this is a fundraiser, there is a fee associated with it. Any questions of staff? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. I would just uh, uh, add the schedule for next Monday night's work session. Uh, we have three items on the agenda at this time. Builder erosion control training program from uh, Mr. Crass and a code revision to require training for builders relative to erosion control. This is all a part of our uh, new EPA standards that we're putting into place. And we will be bringing uh, the water and sewer rate recommendations, the annual review that we do in work session that's then followed by a public hearing at a later council. Those are the three items currently on the schedule, and those conclude staff reports, sir. Any good questions of staff? Thank you. Move on to the consent agenda. I will entertain a motion to dispose of the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the consent agenda to include item A, City Council minutes for March 23rd, 2015, and item B, approving and accepting the legends at Raymore Public Water Main Improvement. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Move on to unfinished business. <coughs> Let's see. A second reading of Bill 3057, please, by title only. The second reading of Bill 3057 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, approving and authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Brummel Lawn and Landscape, LLC, to provide lot mowing services for code enforcement purposes. I'll entertain a motion to dispose of Bill 3057. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3057 and award a contract for lawn, lot mowing services. Second. There is a motion and a second to approve Bill 3057. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. We have a second reading of Bill 3058 by title only, please. The second reading of Bill 3058 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Orr Wyatt Streetscapes for the 58 Highway Entrance Improvements Project, City Project Number 15-203-201, in the amount of $12,888.80 and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. I'll entertain a motion to dispose of Bill 3058. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3058 and award of contract for the 58 Highway Entrance Improvements. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve Bill 3058. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? And abstain? Oh, okay. In that case, uh, uh, unanimous four. And I have the second reading of Bill 3059 by title only, please. The second reading of Bill 3059 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, approving and authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement between the cities of Belton, Raymore, Peculiar, and Pleasant Hill for joint bidding of street improvements. I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the second reading of Bill 3059. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3059 for the joint bidding agreement. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve Bill 3059. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. We have the second reading of Bill 3056 by title only, please. The second reading of Bill 3056 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending Chapter 545, Property Maintenance Code of the Raymore City Code. I'll entertain a motion to dispose of Bill 3056. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3056, the Property Maintenance Code Amendment, the Parking Lot Maintenance. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve Bill 3056. Is there any discussion? Kevin? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I voted against this. Uh, last time it was up for the first reading, and I was kind of 50-50 on which way I should go on this, how I felt about it. 
and I've read over this several times, and even up till today, I'm, I'm still kind of weary on it. Uh, I have come to the decision that I'm going to be a, in a opposition of this, and I'll explain some of my reasons. Um, I'm going to remain consistent in my opposition, but with a lot more clarity in my own mind, and so I can sleep at night saying that what I did is fair and just in, in, in this soul. Uh, section B, where, it's, where we're speaking out as far as the new language, uh, parking spaces, access aisles, and parking lots and driveway shall be kept in proper state of repair and maintained free of hazardous condition. I agree with this. This, this I do agree with. But you get down in here and there's seven, seven bullets underneath that where I kind of think it's subjective to a person interpreting it and not very definitive to a person that is trying to abide by the, the code. Uh, first problem that I have with it is vegetation shall not be allowed to grow through the concrete or asphalt surface. I would be all in favor of this if we as a city required that upon ourselves on our own sidewalks and streets, but we don't. And if anybody needs any proof, just walk outside and, and see. Um, another place that I have issue with, kind of on the, on the same thing, all pavement areas shall be maintained to prevent accumulation of water thereon. Same, same justification there too is that I believe we've got pavement surfaces that, that hold water, and unless we as the city are willing to step up to our own standards that we're requiring on our business owners, I can't support that. Uh, then number seven is, is where I have my most issue. Parking spaces shall be clearly marked on the pavement surface using paint or other marking devices approved by the city. Such paving markings shall conform with the parking plan that was approved by the city and shall be maintained in a clearly legible condition. Again, I think that's subjective to the person divvying out the uh, requirement and uh, very vague to the person that has to live up to the requirement. Uh, this doesn't speak to, um, maybe it does vaguely, but I don't see where it, where it speaks specifically or in the previous code that even our handicap signs that are painted on the driveways be legible. There's been many times that, that I pulled into a parking lot where I know it's a parking only for handicap, only to see that the, uh, the, the insignia, the logo that's painted on the, the spot itself is, is not legible. Uh, I just have some real issues with that. If, if we as a city are not willing to, to live up to our own standards, I don't see how I can expect us to put those same requirements on, on the business owners or the property owners. I, I think this is a good step into improving some of our lots, but again, they're not our lots. They are private property. There are avenues for people to rectify their problems with those properties. You know, I, I, I've heard of how deplorable the Wendy's parking lot was, and I mean no disrespect or, or slander to our, the good business owners that we have here, and I just named one out, Wendy's. Uh, they did have a bad parking lot. They have rectified it. And in my mind is that if I am subjected to one of our area businesses having a parking lot or a sidewalk or trees hanging so low that I have difficulty going there. I have the choice to not go there and register my complaint with the, the business owner. I don't think the best 
route of rectifying a problem is through legislation. Sometimes it is, but in this case, I, I, I don't think that's the case, at least for myself. So um, I'm going to remain consistent tonight, and, I, and I'm just letting you know that for what we're, as much time as I'm taking up, these are the reasons why. I'm being honest with myself. I'm being honest with the community. I'm being honest with the staff and the business owners. And that's where I'm at. I'll let the chips fly where they do. And uh, I'll sleep well tonight. Thank you. OK, do we have a motion? We have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's one in opposition. Seven, uh, six in favor. Motion carries. Move on to new business. Selection of Mayor Pro Tem. Entertain nominations for Mayor Pro Tem. Kevin. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to nominate Ms. Abdelgawad for Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Mr. Mayor, I enter Derek Moorhead as the nominee for Mayor okay. Pro Tem. Any other nominations? We have two nominations for Mayor Pro Tem. All those for Abdel? Each one, if that would be easier. I'll Is read it? each one, if that oh, okay. would be easier. Yeah. Council Member Abdel Gawad. Myself. Council Member Barber. This is the vote for Mayor Pro Tem. Nominations were for Abdel Gawad and Moorhead. Are you abstaining? No. no. Councilmember Burke. Councilmember Holman. Absent. Councilmember Hubach. Moorhead. Councilmember Kellogg. Abdel Gawad. Councilmember Moorhead. Moorhead. Councilmember Stevens. Derek Moorhead. That's five for Derek Moorhead, two for Councilmember Abdel Gawad. Okay, Mr. Moorhead, you're our mayor pro tem again. See if you can get it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next thing is a liquor license application for Freedom Stop. Public hearing, I'll open a public hearing by asking for a staff report. Thank you, sir. I'll call on the city clerk. Thank you. Lori O'Malley, owner of Freedom Stop, has filed an application for a liquor license for a restaurant located at 505 East Walnut to the space adjacent to Freedom Stop. The public hearing was properly advertised in the Raymore Journal for this meeting. The city clerk does find that the applicant has met city code requirements and recommends approval to the council. Approval by a majority of the city council is required. In addition, approval to serve liquor is also subject to state requirements. I'll be happy to answer any questions and the applicant is in the audience. Shall council have any questions of her? Questions? Thank you. It's a public hearing. I'll ask for anybody who'd like to come forward. Keep your comments to under five minutes. Good evening. Lori O'Malley, 431 Pinnacle Drive, Raymore, Missouri. They, um, we are obviously here. They are requesting a um, liquor license um, for the space adjacent to the convenience store and um they uh to be the same business however we would we're requesting the buy the drink liquor license for the restaurant portion of the business so uh, if anybody has any questions happy to answer them thank you questions thank you any other public comment seeing none i'll close the public, uh, public hearing I'll obtain a motion from the council. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the liquor license, license application for Freedom Stop Restaurant. Second. second. There's a motion and a second to approve the liquor license application. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Mm. Next one is Monroe Street, which is also a public hearing. 
We have the reading of <coughs> Bill 3060 by title only. The first reading of Bill 3060 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending the zoning map from R1 slash 0 T single family residential original town overlay district to R3A slash OT multiple family residential original town overlay district, all in lots 9 through 16 inclusive, block 20, town of Raymore, a subdivision in Raymore, Cass County, Missouri. This requires a public hearing, so I'll open the public hearing by asking for a staff report. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll call Mr. Cataret. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, with your permission, if uh, we can start out the report and have the applicant give a brief mm -hmm. description of the project, and then I would conclude with the staff comments. So if I could have uh, the applicant, Mr. Salee. Uh, my name is Randy Salee. I'm uh, owner of uh, R.L. Salee real estate investments uh, LLC and uh, we are the applicant for the project asking for the rezoning um, w what we have proposed is a uh, senior living project um, 55 and older residents or 13 units um, that uh, would be uh, in three different buildings uh, Jim Jim has a, a diagram and and uh, of our project layout um, and uh, we did go before the Planning Commission uh, as probably most of you are aware um, and uh, did not have a favorable favorable vote by the Planning Commission however um, we wanted to go ahead and present the project to the City Council um, and the reasons why are because we truly believe that this project is a, a nice project and would be a positive uh, addition to the community. Um, we will have in our covenants and restrictions uh, as part of this project uh, that the residents will have a certain age uh, restriction. Um, all the units are two bedroom units which will lend themselves to um, my age and above residents. Uh, and we have worked with Kurt Wallace um, out of Columbia, Missouri to help us design the buildings. Um, we've also uh, worked with uh, Matt Schlisch with Engineering Solutions uh, to answer a few questions about stormwater. I believe that was an issue that was brought up by um, the residents around the project. Um, also, there was a lot of concern about traffic um, and we've asked for, uh, again, through Engineering Solutions, uh, their recommendations or their analysis on uh, how much traffic impact this project would have versus what could be built there, which would be seven single family homes. Um, they could be two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom homes. Um, and uh, and I'll, I'd like maybe, uh, Matt to give you a f his analysis of what the traffic and the stormwater could w would be for the project, if you don't mind. So it's Matt Slish, Engineering Solutions, 50 Southeast 30th, Lethem, Missouri. Um, yeah, so some of the comments that came about from the Planning Commission were related to the trip generations or how many cars might come in and out of that facility. Um, being that it's a you know a three building complex with 13 units versus a um, single family residential facility, if you were comparing uh, you know just a standard multifamily apartment complex not age restricted, it would be true that the uh, the amount of volume of cars or trips that would be generated by a site would increase. Um, however, based on uh, you know kind of a, a standard book for transportation, this is the Institute of Transportation Engineering has a, a kind of a volume kind of studies traffic generations and for a senior facility it generates around three and a half trips a day per unit whereas a single family resident generates about nine and a half trips a day per unit so kind of the way this works out is that if you develop this entire thing where 
we've laid out seven residential lots out there, you generate somewhere around 67 trips of traffic out of that site every day. Whereas if it being a senior facility where there's gonna be a number of the residents that don't have cars, a number of the residents don't travel or they use some kind of assisted transportation, there's only 46 trips generated a day. So nearly two thirds of the trips would have been generated by just a single family residence. Um, you know, so while the, the building complex looks much different obviously than a single res you know, family residential, the actual use of the street system is reduced by that senior element of it. The other piece we looked at was the um, stormwater runoff um, and there's little change uh, in stormwater runoff from um, this three building complex in parking based on the amount of green space and vegetated areas you'd have versus seven single family residential lots that might be out there. But either way, both of the developments are gonna have detention, um, you know, that'll store, detain, and control that stormwater runoff. Uh, in addition to, you guys also now have the BMP requirements out there. So the site has to also provide some stormwater quality elements. So this facility would incorporate not only the reduction of increased runoff, but also the reduction in pollutants and things like that that would go into the system. Um, because of the site and the size, all of the stormwater detention and BMP facilities would be kind of a combination of surface and underground um, and be draining you know, northerly along Monroe Street. So, um, you know, again, e either way on the stormwater detention side of it, this development or the other, there's, there's negligible change, but either way they're gonna be controlled by the, by the code and what's required. So I'll be available for any questions. The other part, uh, comments back, uh, uh, or, or I guess uh, things that I would like the council to consider is, is that this project will be single ownership. And we'll, we will own and maintain the project. Um, we, we will have a vested interest in all the residents uh, and the entire project uh, looking nice. Uh, that will allow us to keep the project full. Um, and, uh, and I, I'm not saying that that won't happen with when you have seven individual lots, uh, but I think it is more likely to, to be maintained uh, and stay uh, consistent with, with, you know, with uh, what we believe other projects like this are successful because they are well landscaped, they're well maintained, and uh, uh, folks seem to like to stay in an area that they you know that they that looks nice when they drive home each day uh, if they do get out and about um, and again our long-term plan is for is for ownership and and uh, if the project does get sold it'll be sold as an ent entire complex uh, although a small complex it'll be uh, sold uh, as as one project um, our Kurt Wallace out of Columbia, who has designed several of these projects throughout Missouri and throughout the, uh, the Midwest, um, provides us uh, with uh, kind of with the numbers, uh, kind of the percentages of folks who live in a complex like this. And um, he tells us that about 80% of the residents are, are single women. Uh, there's about 10% that are typically single men, uh, and the other 10% are couples. Um, and that's probably where some of the, the lower traffic generation and the lower number of cars that will be parked there um, will, will comes from, is, is that's the, the statistics on this kind of project. Um, and then also typically the residents who live in a project like this are within about a three to five mile radius. Uh, they're folks who have sold a, a bi-level home, uh, maybe a larger home, and they wanna stay in the community and they need a place to, to place to live, but don't want to move far away from their family and their children and, and things like that. Um, we have worked uh, again with Wayne Kirkhoff, our land planner, who's done the layout that is presented before you tonight. The buildings are do have four sided architecture. They uh, you can't tell that the front door uh, looks that much different than the than the rear elevation. They have a little uh, small <laughs> rear porch on the back of them, and um, and they, they look nice from all four sides. And, and again, we've, uh, the, the buildings that you see the photographs of are the, the buildings that we are going to present uh, uh, 
to, to be built on the complex. So, and if there are any questions from the council, I'll, I would be happy to answer them. Questions for the applicant? Mr. Moorhead? Uh, Mr. Slee, as I was reviewing this stuff this week uh, leading up to this, I had an underlying question. It's a very open-ended question. Um, we, we're going from seven to 13, seven homes to 13 townhome apartment. That's not a lot of difference. What motivated the change to want to go from single family? Um, I'm, can, you, can you help us understand that? I, I, I would be more than happy to. Um, if, if we build seven single family homes, um, we look at this as a long term investment. Uh, we, we build seven single family homes, uh, we'll subdivide the lots, we'll sell the lots along with the, the, the houses, um, and basically uh, be done with that project um, after we build those seven, seven homes. Honestly, we, we want projects like this as a long-term investment. And we would like to have uh, that residual income for many years to come. We'd like to own not only this project, uh, but several other projects that are gonna be a, a, a very similar footprint to this. They might be, in some areas, they might be more residents or more units. In other areas, they might be less. Um, but honestly, it's just a, a long-term uh, business plan that we have to own these we but we feel like the market um, is going to continue to have a demand for 55 and older residents I'm, I'm almost there myself my mom's already there um, and she would love to live in a project like this and she really needs a project like this uh, although she's not in the Kansas City area um, we just feel like there's going to be a, a, a long-term need for this the questions council member stevens i don't really have a problem with the project itself but you know generally these 55 plus communities uh, the folks that live in them are much older than that if you have a couple that live in one of these just from my own perspective like one bathroom just seems to be insufficient can you comment on that uh single restroom you're saying in two bedroom unit um, honestly, the um, again, we're depending on Kurt Wallace, uh, who's designed many of these projects in the past. Um, and if you look at the statistics on who the residents are, um, with that 80% being typically it's a single uh, widow, um, that is very sufficient for that person. Um, and we're not, although we're not encouraging uh, children to live in this project I think if you were if it were a family with small children yes I would agree that you, you know a single restroom would be um, inconvenient uh, but uh, they're nice units uh, the, the folks that live in them have a tendency true they will, will truly probably be more in the uh, less you know less will be close to 55 more will probably be in their six upper 60s 70s 80s um, and those folks that do move into those projects also have a tendency to stay there for you know for uh, a long. They don't have a tendency to move around. And again, that's that's why we uh, like this type of project too. I just kind of, from my own standpoint, there's just two of us in our household. We have four bathrooms, and I tell you, sometimes uh, with c company, that's not enough. But uh, <laughs> when you had your good neighbor meeting with the folks that lived around there, were they for this? I, I didn't really get that out of the packet. Um, some, I, I think when we had our good neighbor meeting, I think we had uh, the folks that were more opposed to it came to the meeting. Um, some listened to what our project was because they just, uh, you know, didn't want to hear what the project was about. Um, I really never took a poll and, and asked, you know, how many were really for it or against it. Uh, maybe I should have, but I did not really ask that question after the meet after we had our good neighbor meeting. Councilmember Kellogg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm kind of curious, uh, looking at the floor plan here and uh, the site plan, and as you speak, 55 and old, older, and I'm looking at the floor plan, the bathroom discussion, are these going to be 
is the plan to be ADA wheelchair accessible and, and all of that or, or how, what, I'm trying to get a grasp of what I'm looking at if this is to be approved. We, we just, we just approved a projects, I don't, don't want to say similar, but I'll say similar, uh, just west of here where it was sold as, you know, many of those were going to be wheelchair accessible and, and with, you know, that type of, the, that community, that type of a person being able to be self-sufficient in their own home. Is, is that what we're looking at here or can you explain a little bit better as to what I can expect? Um, I would not call every single unit to be ADA compliant. Um, they will be zero in slab on grade units with zero entry off of the, the uh, parking lot and into the, into the home. Um, all the doors will be uh, oversized doors. Um, there will be grab bars in the, in the restrooms and, uh, but I would not uh, sit here and, and, and say that every single unit would be ADA compliant. Would I be able to ask you if, if, if a person chose to occupy one of them, that it would be able to be retrofitted rather easily for that, or? Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. I think, uh, and I might ask Wayne this question, and Kurt Wallace can tell me, but I believe um, that we have to have a, I, I believe this is to meet federal guidelines, if I understood Kurt Wallace uh, correctly, that you have to have so many units that will be ADA compliant. Um, and I want to say it's 10% of your units. So if you have, you know, 13 units, I would say if you have two units that are ADA compliant, you meet that. But I'm not positive on that on that number. So, um, but I believe it is. Uh, if I'm remembering it right, I think it was 10%. And I I appreciate your candor. Uh, I won't hold you to those. But you know, if I have more questions, I'll be sure to ask you or staff. And okay. I, I appreciate you being honest with me. Thank okay. you. Any other questions of the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you sir. Uh, go on with the staff comments at this time. Uh, before you is Bill 3060. Uh, it is the proposal to rezone um, the tract of land. And the tract of land is 1.1 acres in size. Uh, and it is on the, uh, the west side of Monroe Street between Plum Street and uh, Elm Street. It's currently zoned R1, but it's got an original town overlay classification on it. The proposal to re is to rezone it to R3A, which is a, a multifamily district, but the original town overlay district will remain on the property. Uh, in your packet, I included an aerial photograph to, to outline the property, as well as several site photographs, just trying to give you a, an idea of the uh, lay of the land um, as it currently exists. Uh, regarding current zoning of the property, again, uh, the property is zoned R1OT. It is surrounded um, to the uh, north, south, east, and west with zoning of R1. Uh, any properties that are in the original town also have the original town overlay district uh, classification. To the northwest, there is a property uh, zoned uh, C2 commercial. It's uh, uh, Harmon uh, Tire Warehouse. And then uh, to the uh, to the east, we have the Hidden Meadows subdivision, and then beyond that are the uh, uh, multifamily units uh, along uh, Skyview Drive. The uh, growth management plan, the future land use plan for this particular property does have a designation uh, of, of low density residential. Uh, I will uh, a little bit later talk about some of the uh, goal statements so in, in the growth management plan that I, that I do believe uh, support the rezoning application. Uh, this application does require a public hearing, and it was advertised for this evening. Uh, so for the record, I need to enter uh, the notices that were sent to the adjoining property owners, the note of, of publication in the journal, our unified development code, the application that was submitted, our growth management plan, uh, the staff report submitted to you this evening, and they also included an uh, email uh, uh, that was submitted by uh, one of the residents in the original town, uh, Mary Thurber who submitted that uh, in writing uh, prior to the Planning Commission meeting. Question one was asked about the Good Neighbor meeting. Um, it was held back in February. There were 10 uh, residents uh, uh, in, in attendance that evening. Uh, 
the, the questions uh, seem to be centered around uh, parking and overflow parking that month that may run out onto Monroe Street and Elm Street. Uh, there was also a uh, discussion about uh, the effects the buildings would have on uh, property values, uh, privacy in backyard areas uh, of existing homes. And there's also a question on the maintenance of, of the alleyway uh, along the west property line and then discussion on a location of a, of a trash enclosure. Typically, these are information gathering meetings, so we, we don't usually have a read on whether uh, individual attendants are forward against it. We simply gather their comments and, and forward those comments on to the commission uh, and the council. Uh, I did include in your packet uh, a couple of photographs of an existing uh, development uh, where the architecture design of the buildings are almost identical to what's being proposed. So I thought it would help uh, for the council to see the photographs. Uh, they did show the front side uh, and rear of the buildings. Uh, this project's down in, down in Peculiar, uh, known as the Meadow, Meadowview Estates. It is a larger project. There are certainly more units as part of that overall project. There's also a clubhouse as part of that development. But the buildings are identical, so I included those photographs. You'll be able to see uh, uh, what they would look like there, of course, one-story buildings. Um, again, uh, two bedroom, one bath. Uh, this particular project, again, proposes uh, 13 uh, units um, and because it is has a, a multi-family zoning classification it would require if the rezoning is approved it would require approval of the site plan by the Planning Commission and is that the site plan that the development aspects uh, landscaping parking uh, building elevations stormwater runoff stormwater control stormwater treatment would all be addressed uh, at the time of site plan uh, consideration uh, the uh, proposal, again, uh, being for an age-restricted facility, uh, it is not a zoning classification, but we accomplish the age restriction through the use of a development agreement and uh, restrictive covenants. The same process, if you recall, uh, a, a few years ago when we considered the uh, Raymore Senior Apartment project that was approved in Remington subdivision just north of Price Chopper. Uh, that, that development has not been constructed yet. They continue to work on uh, financing for that project. But that was also an age-restricted uh, development, and we, we accomplished the age restrictions through the use of the development agreement and restrictive covenants. Um, the covenant would be require a resident of each unit to be at least 55 years of age. Uh, that uh, covenant would be recorded, and it, it is assignable to future owners. The only way to change that development agreement and covenant is through the approval of city council. So the property owner would not be able to just decide to change uh, the makeup of the, or the age restriction uh, of residents. Uh, it would have to be approved by the city, by a future city council. I did include uh, in your packet the uh, planning commission uh, proposed findings of fact that went along with their recommendation. Uh, but I kind of want to uh, close out uh, staff comments with uh, some staff, uh, the staff recommendation. Because um, this is one of the few applications that is coming uh, before, the, before the city council where staff and the planning commission uh, recommendations are not the same. Uh, it's very unusual, in fact, I think, for staff and the planning commission not to be, um, have the same recommendation to council. So I want to be clear about, about uh, staff's recommendation at this time, and then I'll, I'll close out with the Planning Commission recommendation. Uh, the, uh, the applicant uh, uh, is currently making an investment within the, the general area of this, of this property, and I think that's significant. Uh, the Hidden Meadows subdivision, uh, which is a single family detached located to the east, uh, the applicant has purchased three lots and is intending to build three detached single-family residences. That is not an age-restricted subdivision, but most of the residents would be of age 55 and older. It, it seems to serve those individuals well. So he is making the commitment to build those, those homes there. Um, at the same time of doing that, he has uh, purchased this particular property uh, and has uh, specifically seen the need to provide an additional option for residents because not everybody wants, not everybody can afford a detached single family home that they have to maintain uh, completely on the outside and maintain the yard area. So you may have some purchasers that are interested in that, but you also have individuals that want to live in this neighborhood but need the 
uh, common maintenance that would be provided at a facility such as this. Uh, perhaps they can't own the unit, so this is a perfect option for individuals to live in the neighborhood and have uh, maintenance provided uh, housing available to them. Uh, what's currently allowed for the property is important. Um, staff, when we uh, looked at the particular property, we saw the ability to do six single family homes. I think we heard the applicant um, indicate that they, they may be able to fit a seventh home on there. It would be, of course, according to what the development standards are. This is one large track now. They would be um, splitting the property, not back to what it was originally platted at when the original town was platted, but they would be able to create um, at least six lots, it sounds like potentially seven. The development standards in the original town are different than the R1 zoning. So the lots are allowed to be smaller than the R1, the typical 8,400 square foot, 70 foot wide lots. Uh, so they are, they are allowed to be smaller in size. Um, but one thing important about that is, is the, the property is already platted. There are, um, there initially were, uh, 50 foot wide lots platted through this, through this area. So if they come in and build single family residences, that's permitted, there's no rezoning that is required to be done. So a lot of the standards that we talk about, specifically with stormwater control and stormwater treatment are not applicable. And I think that's important. Um, if the property is rezoned, the applicant has to abide by stormwater control and stormwater treatment. If they build detached single family homes, they do not have to comply with that. Uh, so I think there's a, a definite advantage for the neighborhood for, for that. Um, and then if we have detached homes, of course, we'll have each home will have a separate driveway entrance, uh, either under Monroe Street uh, or Plum Street. Under the proposed rezoning, we do have an increase in density. We have an increase in the number of units. We're going from six to 13 units. Uh, but the parking spaces are all provided uh, off-site. The, the site plan that they initially submitted is conceptual, but it shows 22 spaces. So more than uh, adequate to meet the parking requirements for, for the development. Uh, there would be two curb cuts on them in Rose Street. This allows for uh, access, uh, not only for residents, but for emergency vehicles to be able to pull in and, and be able to easily exit the property. Um, again, stormwater detention would be provided. Planning Commission would have to approve the site plan. Uh, the age restriction uh, covenants that would be in place, again, could only be changed by the approval of council. Uh, and uh, I think it's important, the applicant talked about it, but the, the common maintenance that would be provided, not only of the buildings, but of the grounds. Um, all the, the land area will be maintained all at one time, mowed all at one time. Uh, so I think the, just the appearance overall of the property inherently is likely to be better than having six individual single family homes. There is uh, certainly uh, a dire need for senior housing uh, apartment units in Raymore. Uh, currently, we only have a, a few projects that actually offer rental apartment units for senior residents. We have Walnut Estates, which has 34 units, but that is a income restricted uh, senior development. We have Greenway Villas, which has 51 units, but they have a waiting list. Uh, and that, that particular development is down in Lemoore Estates. And then we have Foxwood Springs, which has 126 units, uh, but with Foxwood Springs, uh, the nice thing about those units is you have a, a, a great amenity package. There are a lot of amenities in Foxwood Springs for those residents. The downside is there's a, a lot of people can't afford to live there. The cost would be higher there than in a uh, than in a market rate apartment that doesn't have all those amenities. Uh, I hear that a lot from calls that I get from residents that are looking for places. They love Foxwood Springs. It is a little bit more expensive. Um, interestingly, after the planning commission meeting, and I don't think it was associated uh, with the recommendation of the commission. I think it was just coincidental, but I get uh, correspondence from uh, Sherry at the Raymore Chamber um, indicating that uh, uh, she's receiving more and more uh, inquiries about 55 plus communities. I know I have received a lot of requests for information on where seniors can find rental apartment units in Raymore. Uh, it's definitely a need and increases every year. Uh, the city is involved in the uh, Casey communities for all ages. The, uh, work that's being done through Mark, and this is a recurring theme at every one of our meetings is, you know, a lot of our, a lot of these uh, suburbs have a tremendous uh, number of very nice single family detached homes, but the need 
is for senior housing and creating senior housing in our communities and finding ways to create senior housing. And it is something that we certainly keep on our radar screen. Uh, we were very um, much a strong proponent for the rezoning of the Raymore Senior Apartments that I mentioned. I thought that project was a tremendous project for the city. I hope it moves forward. I think it was a great location. But there's a need for smaller projects in our community as well. And this project meets a very specific need for providing infill housing. One of the council goals is to look at undeveloped land within our community. And this is a site in the original part of town that's never been developed. And uh, certainly is uh, prime for some use to go in there. And I think the one story, uh, you know, attached single family units is a, uh, will fit into the uh, existing neighborhood there very well. Attached single family, multifamily units, they, they do coexist with detached single family housing. We have a number of examples in our community. Uh, the Greenway Villas that was mentioned in Lamore Estates, we have single family directly across the street and we have single family directly adjacent to that project in the Timber Trail subdivision. Uh, the Walnut Estates uh, project that was just recently renovated, a very nice project, uh, it has single family adjacent to the west on, on uh, Woodson Drive. And then down in Sunrise, next to the Morning View subdivision, we have the uh, Bristol Manor and the, uh, the uh, uh, Rehabilitation Center on Sunrise Drive, again, immediately adjacent and, and uh, to existing single family development. So they do coexist uh, very well. Here would be an example of having uh, attached single family. and We'd have uh, uh, detached single family directly across the street and adjacent to it. But I do think that they do coexist well. I mentioned uh, the goals. Uh, one of our challenges tonight, uh, as I looked at, at preparing the staff recommendation, you know, we have council goals in your strategic plan. We have the growth management plan goals, and we have this original town neighborhood plan. They all have different goals, trying to accomplish different things, trying to find the balance between those. You know, council goals, we talk a lot about creating uh, life cycle housing. Uh, we talk about improving the affordability of housing. Um, the GMP talks about you know, housing affordability and life cycle housing as well. It talks about promoting infill housing and providing choices in housing style, size, and cost. And then we have the original town plan, which was uh, done back in 2009. Uh, a, great, a great document, did a lot of good things for the original town neighborhood. Residents were, were very interested in, in maintaining what they had, the lifestyle that they had there. Definitely a different type of development when you when you look at it. Uh, you know, we don't have the curb and gutter, we don't have the storm sewers, we don't have the sidewalk system. But the residents through that plan didn't want those things. They wanted to keep things the way they were. Uh, but we did want to try to find a way to integrate uh, housing and commercial and institutional uses as part of that plan. Uh, so the overlay district was intended to provide flexibility. Uh, to the existing uh, zoning categories uh, with the intent to encourage that mixture of residential, commercial, and institutional uses, but while ensuring their compatibility. So that's what we're trying to do as we looked at this particular project. Again, we believe the uh, proposed rezoning will help uh, strengthen the area uh, in the original town. Uh, we think the impact of the new dwelling units, if age restricted, and that's one of the conditions that staff would recommend, um, it really minimizes any impact that this particular development will have. That, that, the key component of this project is the age restriction. Uh, we believe through the use of the development agreement that we could uh, hold the developer to those requirements. Again, it can only be changed by council. We think that, you know, because of the age restriction, the impacts on existing single family uh, will be minimal. Uh, and staff does, again, support the uh, request to reclassify the zoning. We do recommend approval of Bill 3060 uh, with the one condition reading that a development agreement and restrictive covenant, restrictive covenants that limit the use of the property to residents at least 55 years of age shall be recorded prior to the issuance uh, of any building permits. Uh, I do want to just conclude. I, I left at the dais uh, the staff uh, proposed findings of fact. So if you do support the rezoning of the property, you can utilize uh, the staff proposed findings. Um, but included in your packet are the Planning Commission findings of fact, and again, their findings uh, support their recommendation for denial. And I want to close by noting that, uh, as with all the bills that are presented to Council, uh, Bill 3060 uh, is written in the affirmative uh, to approve the rezoning request. So that would conclude staff report at this time. 
Questions of staff? Kevin? Thank you. You just said something, Jim, that caught my attention. Uh, and it's in conflict with what I thought. Can you repeat that last thing that you just said that the bill is in affirmative of approval? Yes, the, the bill uh, is written in the affirmative. So uh, if the motion is to approve the bill, you would be approving the rezoning. Thank you. Yes. Other questions of staff? Uh, Council Member Stevens? If the zoning would not be approved, do they still intend to build there with other structures? What was indicated at the good neighbor meeting um, is yes, they do. The, the comment was, that question was asked. The comment, if I recall correctly, was that yes, I, I would build uh, upon the property, yes. Councilmember Kubach. I have a question of staff. About 10 to 15 years ago, we had the, the council at that time passed an ordinance that said because in the older part of town, original Raymore, because those blocks were so small, that it was, and the streets were so wide because on where the uh, named after the presidents those the right of ways were 72 feet and those that were named after trees were 66 because of that area was so small that when the rest of it when it developed it would develop in the same way that the rest of the town would so that instead of having the 66 and the 72 the right of ways would only be about um, uh, 30 to 35 feet like the normal streets would be. Now, <clears throat> I can't see where the, I looked up in the code and I couldn't see where that's still in effect, where that ordinance is or not. But if it was, then what that would mean then also there's no alleys in some of the rest of the town. So there's 14 foot alleys and then you've got this other. So if you took that and divided it up among the different uh, people in that area, instead of having 6,000 square feet, you come closer to having 7,000 square feet for building purposes then. And I was checking to make sure that that was still um, true because it seems that this area has been kind of uh, as far as the city of Raymore is concerned, has been uh, benign neglect. And I'm very familiar with this area, and I am concerned about it. I, I think the project is excellent. I think we need it because if you will look at it, this is a mixed use, a perfect example of a mixed use area. But I wanted to make sure that the about the 66 and the 72 and the 14, that that would be revert back to the landowners. I'll attempt to answer your question. The, the right-of-ways that you indicated, Monroe Street, Plum Street, uh, correct, 72-foot right-of-way in Monroe, 66-foot uh, on Plum. Uh, those right-of-ways will not change as part of this project. Those right-of-ways are still consistent throughout the entire original town. And the concept plan that you have uh, uh, included in your packet respects those right-of-ways. Now, the, the, certainly the width of the street does not cover that entire right-of-way, so there's quite a bit of green space that would be between the edge of the pavement and the actual property line, but that's consistent through the entire original town neighborhood. There is an alley 14 foot wide along the uh, west side of the property. Um, they do intend to utilize a portion of that alley, which is allowable. Uh, they would have to approve that portion of the alley, but it would provide access to a trash enclosure uh, that would be uh, off of Plum Street. So I believe, I hope that answers your question, but again, nothing changes with the right-of-way as part of this project. So those right-of-ways are consistent throughout the entire regional town. Well, it would, it would change when it's where the sidewalks go because other areas in town have had sidewalks and these people have been paying taxes for years and they don't have sidewalks. They don't have some of the amenities that the rest of the town has. And so that, that bothers me because I think they should be, the people in this area should not be treated differently than the people in some of the more affluent areas. Just one comment, a big part of the original town neighborhood plan was exactly that infrastructure. And uh, one of the comments that they did not want to see, one of the things they didn't want to see is change to the current system that's there. So they did not support sidewalks throughout, on every street throughout the neighborhood. They did not want curbs on all their streets. They did not want storm sewers. Now, as part of the original town plan, we did incorporate a uh, sidewalk on the major roadways. So the Elm Street sidewalk that's been installed, that was part of the original town plan. Washington Street sidewalk was part of the original town plan. 
the last sidewalk segment that, that the city intends to install in that area would be the Olive Street, and that provides another east-west connection. Um, we would propose from Monroe Street uh, all the way through the original town. But the other street connections, the residents did not want to have sidewalks installed. Uh, that was directly out of the original town plan. Other questions of staff? Sonia? I just have a couple of quick questions that have come up during this discussion. First of all, um, I'm wondering, when you invite people, is it only adjoining properties that are invited to the Good Neighbor meetings? That's my first question. So I'd like to know how many of those notices were sent out. And second of all, um, several times we've talked about the cost of these being market rate. Do we actually have a number? Um, th but thinking about how um, you're saying most of the people who tend to live in places like this are going to be single, maybe widowed women, are they really going to be affordable to the people we're saying that we're going to build them for? Regarding the uh, notification, we're required by statute to notify anybody uh, that owns property within 185 feet. So that, that's where we start with. And uh, typically I do, I, I, I do go beyond that um, if there is a uh, particular neighborhood, perhaps it isn't touched by the 185 foot or to extend to a reasonable distance. Uh, the code grants me the ability to do that. Um, so in this particular case, it looks like we sent notice to 21 uh, properties, and that does go beyond the 185 feet. Uh, but we also do the uh, signs. We post a sign uh, on the property so those that drive by are able to see the yellow sign. They're becoming kind of common now. I, I do get calls from those, and I did get calls on this request from individuals that didn't get the notice but did, did see the sign. Uh, so we do make those attempts and, of course, the legal notice. But uh, then generally on the, um, the actual uh, cost of the units, I know it was stated at the uh, Good Neighbor meeting what the projected rental cost would be. And it looks like uh, what I wrote down was between 650 and $750. That was just a statement of the applicant at the Good Neighbor meeting. Other questions of staff? Okay, I'm gonna open the floor for public comment. Please identify yourself for the record and keep your comments to under five minutes. I'm Rachel Gratzky, 413 South Franklin Street, and Raymore in the original town right next to this property. I'm not the best public speaker, so I apologize <laughs> in advance, I get a little nervous. Um, first of all, you keep mentioning that this is the applicant's investment. When I purchased my house seven years ago, that was my investment in Raymore and the original town. Um, we all know that multifamily properties bring down values for residents in the surrounding areas. Sorry. <laughs> and. Um, and uh, it's undesirable to live next to them. Can any of you imagine this being built in your backyard? Would you want a multifamily residence built in your backyard like this? Plus 55 and older really isn't that old. My parents are within that age range and I would say they're not quiet. 55 plus typically have college students. They might have um, kids that have to come back and live with them due to other circumstances. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a quieter neighborhood. Um, also, when I first moved here several years ago, I attended an event at a local school where the city was asking original town residents to give input to what they wanted to see in their community, which Mr. Cataret has referenced as the original town plan. Um, one of the five areas that was addressed was zoning. The rec recommendations in this plan were formulated from input perceived by people in the community, and um, the goal was to create a vision for the neighborhood's future. Um, when residents were asked about the land use, the majority showed a preference for traditional single-family neighborhoods. They wanted a uh, desire for a quiet neighborhood and had concerns about traffic. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> um, if the proposed rezoning is allowed, the city is really going to be ignoring the wishes of the original town residents, which, as Mr. Cataret pointed out, he's followed their recommendations for not building the sidewalks and other amenities, but then you're going to go ahead and ignore the request to keep it to single-family housing. It just it doesn't make sense um, for the people in that area. If you read the comments in um, from the Planning and Zoning Committee, I think you'll see that there was quite a crowd from um, our neighborhood that were not interested in this project. It's a great project. I have no problem with 55-plus communities or multi 
um, family residential area, residential areas, ju this just isn't the right location for it. Um, I hope that they are able to build it somewhere else. So um, I think I covered everything <laughs> um, that I wanted to say. It's just, I don't think this is the right change for this neighborhood with the original town and the original attentions um, that Raymore was founded on a long time ago. Thanks. Anybody else like to come forward? Seeing none, I'll close the public uh, hearing. And I'll entertain a motion to dispose of Bill 3060. 3062 or 36, 3060, thank you. Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. I move to uh, the council approve Bill 3060, the rezoning of Monroe Street. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve Bill 3060. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, for the record, I wanted to show that I had an ex parte meeting with Rear Old Wilson on Tuesday for, before the election. Uh, I didn't know it was coming up here, but when he was going to vote, well, he mentioned it, and we did, we did discuss this area. I don't know how many of you on the council have been uh, in this area, but the map doesn't show it exactly uh, correct. If you will look on, um, I think it's on page, um, well, I, I can't see it right offhand. But anyway, where it says Rachel Circle, right back east of that is um, the Skyview fourplexes. So we're talking about an area that is um, mixed use, and it already has quite a little bit of traffic on that other side. The cemetery is near there. There's a church there. There's the old township barn is in that area. Then there's a, a spot that is called commercial. Uh, there, so it is not a really, as a neighborhood, it is not a single family neighborhood. It is a mixed use neighborhood because they have all these, they have fourplexes. They don't have any duplexes, but they have fourplexes. Hidden Valley is, is on the, um, it's like a senior citizen. And then you've got the older, and you've got a lot of undeveloped land in here. So it seems to me that this would be a good project because it's already mixed and you're just adding an, another type of mix to it, which is the 55. So there you've got single family, you've got senior citizen, you've got the 55, which is a little bit different in a way from senior citizen, and then you have the fourplexes. And the fourplexes has a lot of traffic already on it, but it doesn't follow. When I was down there looking at it and, and watching the traffic, I didn't see much traffic on um, this area except for those that were going into Rachel. The rest of them that were going down uh, in the sky with the fourplexes were using uh, uh, Sunrise and the other streets. So um, I just want to make sure that, the, that you all understand that this is not a, quote, single family resident area. It is a mixed use area and, as I said, the church. and. Not very far from that is where the farmer's market is going to be, or where the farmer's market really is. So uh, you need to, to know those areas exist. Now, in some of the other part of the older town of Raymore, you don't have that many different uses, but you do have it here. And they've had it here ever since 1872. I believe the page number was 130 for the map showing the R3A and the R1. Other discussion? Kevin? Sonia? Kevin? Thank you. I was going to yield to Sonia. I, if there's any one item on the agenda tonight that I've really struggled with is this one. And like I've said earlier in the meeting tonight, I'm going to be honest with the community and be honest with the developer. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate your candidness and the willingness to come before us with the guts, knowing that this was not well received at the planning and zoning. I'm not going to apologize for that. Um, I don't think anybody needs to. I think the Planning and Zoning Commission did their job. Uh, whether I agree with them or not, I'm not going to second guess that. Uh, I appreciate what they did. Uh, I will say that 
I have some disagreements with it. So let me try to explain myself. Um, I have read each and every comment from the Planning and Zoning Commissioner that was made during the public statement. And I kind of take some issue with it. The first question that I would have is, of those comments, they all said, I agree with the previous comment. I agree with the previous comment. I agree with the previous comment. The first comment that I read was that there are children living in the area and they don't think that a 55 and older community would be a good fit. Quite frankly, I'm kind of offended with that. And I'll leave it at that. Where have we come as a society that certain people don't belong next to us because we don't think so? I think it's kind of audacious and arrogant. Um, I'll probably catch a lot of flack for my comments, but I'm willing to do that because I, I'm going to speak what I feel is right. Um, my question, first question would be, if this wasn't a 55 and plus community that was being planned here, development, would that have just changed the argument? Well, we don't want that there. And I'll give you an example. Yes, I did have this built right across the street from my house, right behind Culver's. I'll give some lessons on that one too. Not this council, but the previous council voted on that project twice. The first one went down in flames. Second time it came back, it went unanimously. Now, I'll give you my personal opinion why. It's because we could not legally deny it because they wasn't asking for a rezoning. They had the zoning. What did they build there? They built the very exact same thing that this gentleman's talking about building tonight except they sold it a lot more aggressively. That's why I asked the questions that I've asked. I didn't hear the gentleman say tonight, and this is where I really appreciate you, is that you didn't try to sell this saying you were going to market this to disabled veterans coming out of Afghanistan and pull on all of my heartstrings and this and that and everything else. I appreciate that. Uh, there was clamor during that time when I voted to not approve that project down there behind the Culver's. A lot of clamor that I was going to get sued individually. The city was going to get sued and I was going to get sued individually because I denied it. I came back two weeks later and I changed my tune. I admit it. When I bought the house that I'm in, I didn't want to live next door to low rent housing. Since I've been on the council, I've learned I cannot discriminate against the type of housing that somebody wants to build that can legally build it there. The only thing that I see different tonight, sir, is that you don't have the zoning. And I can, le I, I can legally and ethically say no. Morally, in my heart and soul, I can't say no because the same thing that I was forced to do on the other side of town, that I had the same arguments plus more, that I had to do it. That's why I'm going to support this tonight, you know. And it is a very unusual situation tonight, and Jim spoke to it. And I, I, I'd hate to be sitting in Jim's seat over there, as uncomfortable as that has to be, to, to give a staff recommendation that is in conflict with what comes from the planning and zoning. That's a very uncomfortable thing for them to do. Uh, I agree with staff. I agree with staff. I respect the planning and zoning commission, but that don't mean I agree with them. Uh, I'm not gonna slam them. But I'm gonna be consistent with myself, with the community, like I said earlier tonight, and I'm gonna be honest. The only difference between this is that you don't have the zoning. The end results is the very same thing that I was forced to say yes to because it was legally required of me. 
And I just can't be inconsistent. I, I, I can't. I appreciate the fact that you are willing to spend money to improve our community. It is our goals as the, the council, the previous council. It'll come up again this year since we got a new council. We'll reevaluate those goals. But right now what's on the book are the goals that Mr. Cataret spoke about, and I'm going to support those. That's why I ran for office this last time, was to support the, the policies that we set as a board to make our community what Mr. Boehner spoke about tonight so eloquently. And that's all I got. Thank you. Mr. 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 Mayor. Yes. Go ahead. I, I noticed that the uh, Community Development Department and Public Works have all said that this was a good project. So that means that then they have no objections to it. I did not see where the Planning and Zoning Commission gave any single reason why they turned it down. They just turned it down, but they didn't say why. I have a question for our, uh, our attorney. When a developer meets all of the criteria for a single family resident, we our subdivision, we don't have the right to turn it down when they meet all of the requirements. Does the same thing hold true on a rezoning? If they have met all of the requirements to rezone it and the staff, public works, and the community development say, yes, we want to see this go ahead, do we have options on it or should we go ahead and, and automatically approve it? What is the statute saying? The statute, Chapter 89, gives great leg legislative discretion to the council in the matter of zoning. This is totally different than the plat that Mr. Kellogg discussed. Okay, that's what I'm this is about. zoning. There are factors. There was testimony before the Planning Commission that it's inconsistent with the comprehensive plan, that it was meant to be a residential area and is called for under the master plan as residential. And Mr. Cataract has itemized some of those factors for you as proposed findings of fact from the Planning Commission on pages 140, 141, and 142 of your packet. And so you do have the right to execute legislative discretion to decide if you think those are the correct findings of fact and should apply and affirm what the Planning Commission did, or if you don't and you want to go with the findings of fact that Mr. Cataret has proposed in his staff recommendation. But this is not a case where you are required to vote legally and have no discretion. Zoning is when you do have legislative discretion. So this is a case for you to exercise your judgment. Well, it seems to me to be it seems to me to be a good project, and I would like to see the council vote for it to go forward because we already have three or four types of housing there, and I think one more would would be a stabilizing effect. Councilmember Burke. I spent a little time looking at the map and looked at each of the comments from the individuals that lived around um, that came to the meeting of planning and zoning. And I made dots on a map and of the addresses that each person spoke. And almost every person that spoke, their backyard or their direct across the street, um, the people that spoke in opposition to it are the people that will look at it every day. To me, that has a lot of merit um, in my decision making. Uh, also, um, Ms. Grodsky is on planning and zoning. She did not uh, vote, <clears throat> but I know that she has looked at it and looked at a lot of cases this way. And uh, I actually chaired that meeting uh, that on planning and zoning that dealt with the Culver's, the area behind Culver's, and that was a totally different animal. So there shouldn't be any comparison to that at all. Um, but to me, the people that live directly around this, their voices really speak highly to me. We've had other situations where we've allowed uh, different residents to do things in their property. And the thing that spoke highly to me at those points were the residents that were directly s subjected to the conditions of the change. And when none of them had opposition to it, I felt very eager to to let someone make a change on their property but when everyone that has been there is subjected to it i don't think i can i can support this 
Thank Council you. Member Abdel Gawad. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's it seems like this project has some definitely some positives and some negatives. Um, I think it's great that it would be one story. The cost seems reasonable. Um, anyone who's watched me on the council for very long would know I'm very interested in the fact that they would have to work with the stormwater um, and that not rezoning this at this point would make that not something that someone would have to do. Um, but I am concerned, as Mr. Burke said, with the way that the community, that neighborhood sees this project. Um, I think it says a lot to me that out of 21 invitations, 10 people came to the Good Neighbor meeting. The people in this neighborhood are, are definitely concerned about what's going to be happening in their neighborhood. Um, of those 10 or maybe different people at that Planning and Zoning Commission, there were eight people who spoke out against this project. Um, I have to say I disagree a little bit with Mr. Kellogg because the first comment from the Planning and Zoning Commission brought up many issues including water retention, sidewalks and sewers, traffic. Um, it seemed like there were a lot of issues that were brought up in, in that first comment that everyone else seemed to agree with and then add to. Um, I think this looks like a great project on paper, um, but I have to say as the representative of the people in Original Town in Ward 4, I, it doesn't seem like it's a good fit for this neighborhood. I know there's a, a new house going up in Old Town, I, Old Town, Original Town, that has a really neat wraparound porch, kind of sticking with that old um, historic feel in the neighborhood. I, the pictures that we saw of this plan don't really seem to, to fit with that. And, and I hear what Ms. Hubach is saying, that just a few streets over, you know, there are new houses, there are townhouses and such, um, but, but those townhouses aren't part of original town and they aren't um, right across the street from single family housing. So I feel like even though a lot of the goals of the city that Mr. Cataract brought up are important to me and things that as a council and as a city staff we want to to work toward um, I'm not convinced that original town is the right place for this project it sounds like a great project there's definitely a need for this kind of housing in Raymore and in our surrounding communities but I'm not sure original town is the place for that and again as as the person elected to represent the people in Ward 4 I feel like it's my responsibility to be their voice tonight um, and vote against this. There is a motion and a second to approve Bill 3060 through other comments. Council Member? Um, Go ahead. You know what? I asked the applicant um, kind of what the rationale was uh, for the change here, and, and it was not designed for me. It was not my intention to pass judgment on the applicant. I was just trying to get an understanding uh, for this. As I look at this, and as a previous member of PNZ as well, um, you know, I, I tend to try to say that people have the right to do what they want with their own property, develop it the way they want to. Um, you know, maybe I want uh, a certain feature in my neighborhood, but the neighbor doesn't, et cetera. So I, I struggled with this a little bit. Um, you know, unfortunately, th this is not a mixed-use scenario. scenario. It's actually just a lot of different zones around each other, which is not meaning the same thing. Um, but as we are looking at our commercial development here in, in our future, utilizing mixed-use zoning, it's difficult for me to say I don't like it when we are going to want it and utilize that. But it, that's not really what's happening here. I also agree with several members who said that, um, you know, uh, including the developments on Sunset into this discussion is, it's a night and day argument. That's like saying we need to always consider Belton in all of Raymore's decisions because they abut Raymore. Um, it, logically, it doesn't fit. In this particular instance, what drives my concern here today is, um, original town plan. Um, I'm not a member of Ward 4. I try to look at all issues of the city, but I'm, I'm less knowledgeable in, that, in other wards than I am in my Ward 2. So the difficulty that I have here is 
I just don't see a huge impact going from six to seven properties up to 13, while at the same time, um, the way I typically try to scrutinize is I'm looking at, is the development consistent with the ongoing plan of that community? My problem is, is I have not read the original town plan, and so I can't answer that specifically tonight. So as a result, I'm actually going to abstain because I feel at this point, while I see positives and I'm supportive of the applicant in, in principle, I can't say that the development actually fits the original town plan because I haven't read the original town plan. So as a result, I'm fearful if I vote yes, that I am supporting something without being fully knowledgeable on it. Well, at the same time, if I vote no, I may be actually inhibiting our progression in this discussion and feel that an abstention is more appropriate. Other uh, discussion? Council member? Mr. Mayor. Yes. If, we're not, if, if we don't know what the original town plan says, then we can't vote for or against. Why don't we um, not necessarily table it, but bring it up for another discussion after we've had a chance to look at the plan and see if it does fit? Well, we could do that. Take a motion. We're told all the time that we need to do uh, infills, the brownfields, to fill in the vacant spots. And when we get a chance to do it, we don't want to do it. And I've said on this council enough times that when we have new subdivisions come in, somebody comes in and says, we don't want them in our backyard because I want to be able to see the, the uh, rabbits run and the coyotes uh, out there. And if we build houses there, I can't see that. And so we say, well, sorry, but Raymore's got to grow and we need that space. So I think we need to consider, is this good for the city of Raymore or is it bad for the city of Raymore? I think it's good. It takes an area where these lots have been vacant for years and now we're, we have a chance to get them developed and it seemed to me we ought to take advantage of it. Mr. Mayor. Um, since I'm the one that mentioned abstention in, in reviewing the original town plan, I will not be bringing a motion to table this. I believe in the two week time um, that for our next read, I would have more than enough time to, and, and I believe any council member would have enough time to review that plan. I, I believe that um, the vote should stand today as a first read and it would be an indicator to the applicant of our position. Um, and so therefore I call the question. The question has been called. All those in favor? What is the vote? We're voting for it? Is that I'm sorry, sir. Is this a vote to call the question? The vote to call the question. It should be. A all, all in favor of to call the question? All in favor of calling the question? Yes. Opposed? One opposed? Rest in favor. The question has been called. Bill 3060 has been motioned and seconded. All, all those in favor? One, two. All those opposed? One, two, three, four. Oh, and abstain? One. One abstention. Four against. Two in favor. Fails. First reading fails. Move on to Bill 3062. I have a reading of Bill 3062 by title only, please. The first reading of Bill 3062 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, approving and authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Vance Brothers, Inc. for the fiscal year 2015 microsurfacing project in the amount of $210,620.48 and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. Thank you. Staff report. Thank you, sir. I'll call on Mr. Cross. Thank you, Mr. Fearborn. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, this project is part of our annual uh, street preservation uh, project. It will involve uh, microsurfacing or placing a thin lift overlay on Lucy Webb Road, North Cass Parkway, uh, Town Center Drive, North Park Drive, Rachel C Circle, and Cedar Falls Court. 
uh, we do recommend award of the contract to Vance Brothers in the amount of $210,620.48. Questions to staff? Go ahead, Joe. Mr. Kras, um when you say a thin layer, I'm just, just because I'm a person that likes numbers, how, how thick is that? Quarter of an inch? Quarter of an inch. Thank you. Yeah. Councilmember Stevens? When you do this, are we starting to make the surface below it smooth? Because we've done this stuff before, and Fox Ridge has got to be a really terrible example of it. It's almost undrivable. It just drives me crazy because they're about 30 feet, you hit a little pit. Are we? Are we? This 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 is a surface um, rejuvenation. It does not necessarily fill in. It fills in some minor minor dips and depressions, but not not the way that a, a full mill and overlay. I just kind of got that when we do that sort of thing, and I'll be smooth when it's done. It's just my personal opinion. Other comments, questions of staff? Do we entertain a motion to dispose of Bill 3062? Mr. Mayor, I move we approve Bill 3062 for the 2015 microsurfacing project. Yeah. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve Bill 3062. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, passed unanimously. May I have uh, reading of Bill 3063 by title only, please? The first reading of Bill 3063 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, approving an amendment to the fiscal year 2015 operating budget. Thank you. Staff report? Thanks, sir. Bill 3063 requests council approval to eliminate the position of the community outreach coordinator, salary grade 14, and replace it with the position of a communications manager, salary grade 18 for the city of Raymore. Um, the position for the community outreach coordinator that, that it has existed until now was primarily responsible for being a reporter for the city. He reported our events, uh, put together major issues for the city council in various formats, and also put together, helped in putting together the Raymore Review and Parks Guide. Uh, the city manager actually sees the new position as um, allowing us to, if you will, remake uh, and improve uh, our existing documents and bring them into the 21st century, as well as uh, starting a whole new program for communications and branding for the city. The new position would have uh, all of the old position's responsibility, but be responsible for all new resident communications, all of our social media. They would assist with public meetings. They would assist with council communications that were going out. And obviously, they would be responsible for upgrading all of our annual reports, uh, the city budget book, to make them more user-friendly, uh, more of an outreach effort for the city communications. Staff would recommend approval of the change. Questions of staff? I'll entertain a motion to dispose of Bill 3063. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3063, a budget amendment for a communications manager. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve Bill 3063. Is there any discussion? Kevin? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got a comment. Um, one day late last week, I was headed to work and I ran into Council Member Holman at the Quick Trip. We were both getting coffee and soda. And we spoke briefly, and he, that's when he told me he would not be here tonight. And he asked if it would be possible to have his comments uh, known. I said, I'd be glad to tell that. And so I'm asking for the privilege here, and I know you'll grant it, so I appreciate the, the opportunity. Uh, Mr. Holman did say that he is in support of this, even though he cannot vote. But he wanted to pass that information on to his colleagues, and I said, I'd be glad to do it. Okay. Any other discussion? There's a motion and a second to approve Bill 3063. All in favor? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Motion carries unanimously. And that concludes new business. Move on to public comments. Anybody like to make public comment, please identify yourself for the record. Keep your comments to a maximum of five minutes. Seeing no one, I'll close the public comments. And move on to council communication. Council Mayor communication, excuse me. Councilmember Hubach, you're the first tonight. Mr. Mayor, 
Mm -hmm. Last year we had our first council retreat and it was very it was very successful and I'm suggesting that we have another one this year and that the city manager figure out a date that we can have it. I recommend that we do it in June because I believe that the reason for June was that um, it gave us plenty of time then if we had anything that we wanted to go into the budget. That was one item. The second item has to do with um, charter and uh, some maybe updates. There's two or three areas in the charter where we might want to take a look at it and I suggest that the council do that to, to decide whether we want to call for a, a charter commission review or do some things with the council and doing themselves. If the council does it, the deadline for having anything on an April election would be um, the first week was in January. And if we had it as a uh, charter uh, amendment commission, then they would have to have a year and that would mean that uh, they would have to have it in there by uh, decisions made no later than uh, June. Okay. Councilmember Abdel Gawad. Nothing tonight. Councilmember Kellogg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll take this opportunity to congratulate all my colleagues up here and the new members. Um, thanks to all who ran for the for this April election. I'd like to thank all the voters who took time to vote. Uh, it is an exercise in democracy, and it is our founding principles. And thank God we have that 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 right to vote, and uh, we are definitely God blessed for that. Um, I've got a lot of things going through my mind, <laughs> but I'm going to refrain from even going into it. I, I, it's not that it's not good, but sometimes it can be perceived as bad, and if you ain't got anything good to say, you may as well just shut your hole. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll just keep my mouth shut tonight. Okay. Thanks a lot. Councilmember Moorhead. Try to talk that. <laughs> <laughs> The comments flooding into my head. Um, okay, first of all, I also want to mirror the fact that I um, I, I appreciate all the people who were up here. Um, Councilmember Barger, Barber, welcome. Um, glad to have you aboard. Uh, look forward to the next year. Um, I, I also appreciated a recent editorial in a newspaper commenting about uh, people not coming out and voting. Uh, I think that needs to be reread on an annual basis, but I do want to point out that while we celebrated tonight four people who were reelected to represent citizens of Raymore, there were three very sincere efforts made by three other valued members of the community, and I wanted to appreciate their efforts and their willingness to participate and contribute to our community. Um, uh, Mr. Boehner, uh, I think all of you would agree, gave a very uh, sincere, touching um, statement as he left. I uh, um, have to say uh, Councilmember Holman embarrassed me at the last work session because he wanted to compliment him on the way out because it was his last time. And, and I, I have to reiterate the statement that while well, Mr. Boehner was normally very quiet up on the dais and typically had no public comment to make or uh, mayor council communication at the end, he was very interactive with all of us and participated a great deal. We enjoyed all of his input. We valued everything that he had to bring to the table. Um, uh, I know that council member Barber will keep up with that, but at the same time, Mr. Boehner did set a very high bar and um, he will be missed and appreciated. So I have nothing but fantastic things to say about Jason. I wish him well. Um, I do want to go to a couple completely different notes. The jog with the dog last year, we uh, got a late start to it because it rained on us and there was lightning. So a number of us had to corral uh, the dogs into the public works building. And I have to applaud all the dogs. They actually behaved better than the, than the <laughs> humans. Uh, but they did eventually get out. I want to really encourage people to do it. Uh, uh, because they have a lot of treats and some very interesting things about the dogs. You can go visit with the animal control department and learn a little more about that. It's just a great time. Um, and uh, and it's, it's an excuse to get out with your dog. So I really want to encourage people to do that. Um, I also wish to finish off on a topic of civility. 
Um, first of all, uh, I, I'm really appreciative of the nine people that I get to work up on the dais here this next year, and I'm just really hoping that, uh, you know, while we may disagree with positions, uh, it's not really appropriate to disagree with people or criticize the individual members. And in fact, actually, based on a resolution we passed last year, it's in violation of our charter to actually directly criticize another member of the council. And that needs to be reminded, so I'm hoping that we can have a good year of civility on the council. Um, you know, again, the discourse is valued. Actually, I enjoy some of the times I'm opposed, so um, I welcome that. But at the same time, uh, personal attacks are, are not actually appropriate. Um, and then I'll finish off with the following statement. Uh, um, I never resist the opportunity to either brag or embarrass my daughter, who is in the audience tonight. Um, but the one thing I must say is uh, um, I'm really amazed and impressed with her. When we took a break in between the meetings, she had actually was working the room, talking to other people, and she found a resident that wasn't aware of what ward she was in and just had some questions. And my daughter was doing my job for me. Um, I have no doubt in the very soon future she will overtake me professionally and <laughs> ma from a maturity standpoint and uh, may end up on this dais, you know, as well. So, um, but I just was really impressed with that and I always have to point that out when I can because I'm very proud of her. So with that, I'll, I'll stop. Thank you. Councilmember Barber, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to personally thank... Um, Councilman Boehner for his service the last two years. He was my personal councilman, and um, I appreciate um, his sacrifice and his service for those two years. <clears throat> Excuse me. I also want to make a comment. We, we had the candidate forum. We didn't get a chance to, to do a closing statement. I'm certainly not going to do that whole statement, but kind of following uh, Councilman Boehner's shoes, I moved to Raymore 15 years ago because of the housing and the school and the safety but we stayed because of the people the people of Raymore and uh, I want to thank the people of Raymore for this opportunity thank you Councilmember Stevens thank you Mr. Mayor just want a quick congratulations to all the candidates and I wanted to talk about a, a dream I had the other day and I uh, mentioned this to Mr. Fewerborn uh, <laughs> which we've already kind of had a laugh about I had his pen and I was writing with it which I didn't quite understand how I got it or what I was writing but uh, it was just kind of funny I thought I'd mention it Councilmember Burke <laughs> thank you mr. mayor um, a couple weeks ago when we had our meeting I wanted to thank the Parks Department for the touch of truck and I forgot and it happens every time I was oh man I forgot to thank somebody um, but I also want to thank him for the Easter uh, egg festival and it was it was great, and uh, I got to find out who was who the Easter Bunny was, and that was pretty surprising, so that was kind of fun. But my children, we've been going there probably, I don't know, 12 years, maybe 13, um, and it's always a great time. Also, I wanted to thank all the uh, Raymore residents that went out and voted for any candidate for any of the issues that were available to, to vote on or just to look at and decide not to vote on something if they didn't feel that they had uh, you know, a good, good decision. On that particular thing on the ballot but that's definitely um, something that we need to challenge people to do more of and get out and double those numbers we had a lot more people paying water bills than we had people voting that day and um, that's not to chastise anyone that's just um, an observation and I want to see see more people come out uh, especially in those school board and, and city council elections they're probably more important in my opinion than anything else uh, that we do because locally is what drives everything that we do thank you all righty my notes welcome councilmember barber say goodbye to councilmember boehner jog with your dog i'll be out with boo 105 pound white german shepherd um, the, uh, we do have reason to go into executive session yeah, sir yeah. The uh, Old Town Overlay District, if that's uh, available in electronic form, you may want to send, correct, it, sir. send it out to everybody. 
and I guess that's all I've got. So we have a reason to go into executive session to discuss litigation matters as authorized by 610.021, subparent 1. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to enter into executive session to discuss litigation matters as authorized by 610.021, subsection 1. Second. We have a motion and a second to go into executive session. Roll call vote. Councilmember Abdelgawad? Yes. Councilmember Barber? Yes. Councilmember Burke? Yes. Councilmember Holman? Absent. Councilmember Hubach? Yes. Councilmember Kellogg? Yes. Councilmember Moorhead? Yes. Councilmember Stevens? Yes. We'll uh, retire to an executive session. We'll return only to dismiss the main meeting. <laughs>